Hi, uh, I will thank Dr. Nikhil and Dr. Amul for kind invite. Uh, can you please share my slide? So, uh, this is an interesting study, hypothesis generating study. Uh, it's a prospective analysis of patients with NACLC who received new adjuvant chemoimmunotherapy or immunotherapy alone prior to resection or definitive chemoradiotherapy. Uh, next slide, please. So the background or the basis of doing this study was uh, there is feasibility of neoadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy and there were high rates of pathological remission, both major and complete, based on previous phase one and phase two study. Next slide, please. So uh, in this study, they took 35 patients from two centers, of which 12 were oligometastatic, and all patients which were selected were having potentially curative stage, but they were not receiving curative treatment either due to some technical reason like tumor was large enough to give definitive radiotherapy upfront or some functional reason medically unfit patient upfront. So in tumor board, it was decided that these patients would be started on palliative chemoimmunotherapy or immunotherapy alone and then they will be reviewed after uh, two or three cycles or four cycles uh, with PET CT or imaging which was done prior and they will again do tumor board and then decide. So after review of uh, tumor board, patients received either definitive curative treatment or palliative treatment. Next slide, please. So of these 35 patients, uh, 14 patients had PDL1 of more than 50, 14 had between 1 to 49, and seven patients had PDL1 negative. The regimen which patients received, most of them received chemo plus immuno. Only five patients received immuno-onco drug alone. So, what was the treatment given after the end of uh, new adjuvant treatment? So, 11 patients underwent surgery, which was R0 resection. Two patients underwent R1 or R2 resection. Chemoradiotherapy was given to 18 patients, and six patients could not be taken for curative intent treatment. They received palliative systemic therapy alone. Next slide, please. So, the primary endpoint of definitive therapy, whether patient received definitive therapy or not after new adjuvant treatment, was reached as 29 patients out of 35 uh, would underwent some curative intent treatment, which was 83%. And primary endpoint or assumption was more than 80% would be considered as positive for primary endpoint. Again, according to RESIST, 76% of the patient had either complete or partial response, and there was no new safety signal and treatment was uh, well tolerated. Next slide, please. So, of 27 patients, uh, 7 out of 27 had complete metabolic response. These are the patients who underwent surgery. 6 out of 11 patients uh, who underwent surgery had complete or major pathologic response. Median follow up at 15 months, uh, patients who underwent curative treatment, recurrence was there in 13 patients, that is 31% of the patients, and death in three patients, that is 10% of the patient. While in palliative treatment, uh, four out of six patients, that is 67% had recurrence, and death, two out of six patients, 33%. Next slide, please. So, we can conclude that new adjuvant chemo drug is feasible for patients with locally advanced or oligometastatic NSCLC, which for some reasons could not undergo curative intent treatment upfront. And two majority of them, more than 80% of the time, we will be able to give a curative intent treatment. And at the end of 15 months, uh, if two-third of the patients are in remission, it seems that of the subset of patients whom we are giving curative treatment, there will be some patients who will receive cure. So cure seems possible in such population, which is really difficult to treat otherwise. Uh, I think this is my last slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, this was a small poster presented in ELCC. I hope I had just done justice to it.